With these days, modern performance cars is becoming increasingly more complex and difficult to replace the standard ECU with an aftermarket standalone. Ten years ago, this would have been the normal way we made our tuning changes, but with our modern vehicles, the electronics package in the car relies on two-way communication between all of the electronic control modules. This means if we take the factory ECU out of the system, sometimes the automatic transmission won't change gear, maybe, maybe the air conditioning won't work, and often and the gauge cluster won't display what's happening. So it's becoming more common these days to reflash the factory fitted ECU fitted to the car. We're here with Mike from Cobb, one of the leaders in the reflashing market, to talk about some of the advances that Cobb are making with factory ECU technology. Uh, First of all, Mike, that line is becoming a little bit more blurred these days as to where we need to go from a factory ECU to uh, an aftermarket standalone. I'm going to talk about that, but also when we're starting with a factory ECU, we're starting with a factory control strategy, unsurprisingly designed for a stock factory car. And we're taking some of these cars now and making two, three or four times the factory power, adding forced induction to naturally aspirated cars and we want motorsport functioning such as launch control and proper traction control. The factory ECU never ever intended to include this. So how are the likes of Cobb dealing with this? Sure, it's a great question. Um, and like you said, things have come a long way. Uh, for the most part, I'd say it's been on the end of the reverse engineering efforts uh, of companies like Cobb. And really at the end of the day, the sky is the limit as far as most of these computers, as long as the engineer is capable of writing the code. Uh, just as it gets written on the standalone, we can write it on the factory computer as long as there's space and the desire to do so. Uh, so the GTR is one example of where we've added some of those features like traction control that you mentioned, uh, also uh, auxiliary injection control. So uh, on this car, we can support a 12 injector system um, with a really nice level of integration because it's all on the factory ECU and uh, we can move in and out of it nice and smoothly um, as well as several other custom features. Now, I think probably just touching on how you're doing that, it's important to understand that while, yes, you are starting with a factory Nissan ECU, uh, the reverse engineering you're talking about in the coding, basically you have the ability as Cobb to rewrite some of the functionality and the way that ECU works to add these additional functions that Nissan never even considered? Sure, absolutely. Uh, in the case of this car, uh, boost control was one of the first ones uh, that we chose to rewrite. And for the most part, it came down to ease of use for our tuning network. Um, the factory system on this car is quite elaborate and uh, frankly just took too long for people to tune. So we simplified it, made it something they were a little more used to. Uh, and that's one way that we can uh, you know, improve things for our tuners. Another one would be adding the additional functionality like the additional controls and uh, another one of them for this car would be an advanced launch control function where we take control of throttle, ignition timing and fuel separately for the launch so that the tuners can dial in exactly the engine speed they want, exactly the amount of boost they want and get the car to leave the line consistently every time. Now, you just uh, mentioned there about auxiliary modules, and this is something where uh, the factory ECU can be a limiting factor. Uh, of course, you're limited to the factory header plug for uh, the wiring for inputs and outputs. So sometimes when you want to add additional functionality, maybe fuel pressure sensors uh, or flex fuel ethanol content sensors, this means that you need to delete other existing functionality. Now, this is a new product that Cobb have come out with to address this. So can you tell us a little bit about the Cobb CAN gateway? Way. Sure, absolutely. So the CAN gateway is a means for us to get on the CAN bus on the factory vehicle, uh, integrate with it, and uh, absorb information from it, add information to it, uh, and bring in additional devices. So uh, currently, we're using it on the GTR for a test bed, um, and uh, we're adding an uh, ethanol sensor and a fuel pressure sensor. Um, it can be used literally for anything we set our mind to. Um, but the big thing on these cars is uh, tuners are always asking for more in terms of inputs. They want to get all the data they can. And in the past, we had to delete the uh, pre-throttle manifold pressure sensors in order to bring in some extra inputs. So what we've done here is, over the CAN bus, we're bringing in those features. And that way, now they can use those charge, temp, uh, charge pressure sensors either for what they were originally designed for or for other things. So uh, coolant pressure and uh, other safeties are a common thing on the big cars. You know, They want to know if they lift the head halfway down the track and shut it down, and that way they can still do that. 
Okay, so I just want to back up a little bit because a lot of our listeners there may not quite understand what this CAN bus is. So CAN stands for Control Area Network and traditionally when we're wiring these sensors in, as you said, you've got to reallocate an existing input so you can get your, your coolant pressure or uh, ethanol content sensor into the ECU. Instead what you're doing is running these sensors into a central hub, it's processing that information and then it's sending it out over a two wire CAN bus that you're connecting into the factory CAN bus. So that CAN bus has got a huge amount of information circulating around between all of those electronic modules. So you're just adding that additional information onto the existing bus and then you can grab that information out of that CAN bus from the ECU. Correct, yeah. So traditionally, uh, we're bringing in an analog voltage and through All the ECU, right, sponsor, we're scaling it sponsor, so we can present it, it as you know fuel pressure or whatever we're working with. In, in this case, we take the voltage in to the gateway, detect what it is, fuel pressure for example, do the conversion on the gateway, and then we send out data rather than a voltage to the ECU. So the ECU knows what this is and it'll get the pressure directly. So we can immediately display it without the tuner having to scale it in their software and it's just ready to go. Now you've also got a, a unique way of that CAN gateway straight away detecting what sensor you're plugged in so there's no setup. Tell us how that works. Sure, so uh, we've added a detection circuit to each of the harnesses that come with the sensors. So there's one wire on the harness dedicated to that detection. The ECU sees what the sensor is, the gateway automatically sets it up, and you're ready to go straight away. So all the tuner needs to do is enable the gateway functionality in the tune, and that's it. Anything that makes the tuner's life easy is, yeah. is certainly going to help there. Yeah. Uh, now the, the gateway that you've got there on your own GTR has two yeah, sensor inputs on, on it, but uh, what if we want to add more there. sensors and sure. obviously this is a new product but as Cobb develop more sensors how do we go about that? Absolutely, so there's an auxiliary port on the gateway and that will allow us to daisy chain multiple gateway systems together to add additional functionality. So some things we've talked about for the future would be just additional inputs and outputs. Uh, specifically, we might do some auxiliary fuel injection uh, or perhaps some uh, additional wastegate control for vehicles that have uh, VTG turbos like Porsches from the factory, where if you want to fit a traditional turbo with a traditional wastegate, you need a standard solenoid that gets operated differently. And that's a way that we can do that. And uh, one other thing, like you said, about making life easy for the tuner, the plug and play aspect is great just because if we've all been there with a customer, we ask them what fuel pressure they got and they say maybe 100, maybe 150 psi, I don't remember, I don't know which one, that takes all the guesswork out of that, you plug it in, you know you've got your correct reading. Now, actually, just talking about the uh, fuel pressure as well, other than knowing what you've got, uh, there is the potential there with the Cobb system to basically run some protections around yeah. the fuel pressure. Can you tell us how that works? Sure, so we have a target fuel pressure where you can set uh, at each manifold pressure and uh, essentially we find situations where sometimes on a lift throttle condition you can have an odd fuel pressure situation uh, temporarily and maybe you want to leave a little headroom in an area that you're not as concerned about but at high boosts we want to have a really tight fuel control mechanism and only allow fuel pressure to drop a few psi and that allows you to do that and uh, traditionally what we use as our fail safe is uh, a throttle closure we find that that's just far more gentle on the engine than actually cutting it but serves the purpose of producing uh, power output, protecting the engine. Anything we can do to provide a little bit of safety margin with these high performance engines where it doesn't take a lot to go wrong to cause some expensive damage, obviously uh, that's got to be an advantage. Now, obviously working for Cobb, you are a little bit biased, however I know from your background you've dealt with many aftermarket standalone ECUs. I kind of alluded at the start of this uh, chat to the fact that that line between where we need to go to an aftermarket ECU is becoming more blurred. Yeah. Have you got like a line in the sand of what you consider to be a point where a standalone makes more sense or is there really no limit now? That's a great question. Uh, I think as we continue developing this product, uh, allow it to daisy chain and bring more and more things in, we push that boundary further and further. Uh, currently, uh, I'd say input-output limitations on the really big race cars uh, are one of the things that's a, a common concern. You know, if you want to bring in four EGTs and, or six EGTs on a GTR, you know, maybe six wideband, something like that. That's not something we can currently facilitate. And ultimately, uh, even at a place like TX2K, where we've got the wildest of the wild, 
there's still a pretty small percentage of folks that are looking to do that. So, um, for example, uh, English uh, and ETS have been out here running sevens on our product years ago, you know, probably four or five years ago at this point. So people have certainly shown you can go really fast with what we've got, and we've added quite a bit more since then. So we'll just keep pushing. So essentially we've got a product here that's probably going to be a, a pretty suitable option for 98% of people exactly. that want to go fast. Yeah, absolutely. And we're certainly not looking to be that 100%. Um, what we'd really love to do is offer something that meets most customer needs at a reasonable price, make it easy to tune, keep our tuners happy, everybody happy. Look, it's really exciting to see the, the level of development, particularly in the last five years or so, that's cropped up with factory ECU tuning. We're also excited to see where it goes to in the future. Now, if people want to find out more about these products, uh, where can they reach out to? Sure, we can go to CobTuning.com. That's your best bet. We've got a whole lot of cool stuff there. Uh, also on Facebook, you can check out Cob Tuning's Facebook page, where we have some interesting videos and some more uh, entertaining content. Great to chat and appreciate your time there, Mike. Thanks. Absolutely. Great to see you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.